Hi guys and welcome to my most stressful day at work ever because I I get to drive a $420,000 Rolls-Royce Cullinan. Before we get into it, Matt, why don't you give him a quick walk around of this beast? Now both Matt and I, who's behind the camera, are just, well, completely in awe of the overall proportions of this vehicle. And you're not gonna be able to really get that sense on camera, but it's just massive. Let's start out at the front where you get this incredible hood and people were really kind of up in arms when they released this vehicle, the first ever Rolls Royce SUV. But trust me, it doesn't matter because this screams Rolls Royce. This could not be any other vehicle. The length of this hood is monumental. It's unlike any other SUV I've ever seen, any other SUV I've ever driven. And of course, you've got the spirit of ecstasy right here at the front. You see, I think the, the misconception is, is it's not just another SUV. I couldn't take this spirit of ecstasy off and put on a BMW badge. It wouldn't look right. This looks like a Rolls Royce first and foremost. Now, some of the cool things you'll notice down here on the side, We've got these Rolls-Royce emblems that are always vertical. They always remain vertical when you drive along. All right. So under this massive hood, you'll find a 6.75 liter V12. And the impressive number on this engine, 627 pound-feet of torque, well over 560 horsepower. Just an absolutely incredible work of art. Now, the crazy thing is, let me start it up and you'll have no idea it's running. I mean, I've heard some refined engines in my short time on this planet, but just nothing like that. Now, every Rolls Royce is pretty much bespoke, so you can customize this vehicle to exactly your specification. You've got this incredible refined wood across the dashboard. And the cool thing is, is everything you touch, like nothing, these organ poles, for example, nothing is plastic. Everything is metal. And that's really what struck me when I first got into this. Is it a car? Is it a truck? This battleship is that you just can't get away with any plastic in here. It's all high quality. There's also a bunch of weird stuff you do have to get used to, for example, Look at these fan controls. It's off, high, medium, max, and soft. Not low, but soft. And then you, of course, have these temperature dials, which are classic. There's something straight out of like a core niche from 40 years ago. Just, just, just gentle, small, beautiful touches like that. It's not very fussy. It's not very complicated. Nothing on here screams, um, you know, tech. It's not like a Tesla. It's just all super refined. Even like, for example, this transmission selector which is like a column shifter. The end bit's plastic, but the actual stock is cold and it's metal and it's beautifully made. What do you think in the comment section below? Now this one is a little funny. It's got some teal accenting across the inside. So you got teal on the seats, teal through the doors. On the gauge cluster here, it's not fully digital. And what I mean by that is you still have these round bezels, but everything within the bezels is completely um, computerized. Now, no tachometer, Rolls-Royce use these little power reserve indicators, so they go from 100 to zero, depending on how hard you accelerate. You've got fuel, temperature, and speed, and I think that's just about all you'd ever need. I'm still trying to figure out this infotainment system a little bit. It's basically, if I'm being honest, this is the one thing that could be BMW. Um, it's largely the same as like an iDrive, so you've got, you know, your map functions, menu is a little different in in the design of course you've got like some rolls royce touches one thing it doesn't i don't like very much is when you put it in reverse why sh that should be a cullinan why is that not a cullinan that little 360 degree angle car but anyways i digress on that one let's take a look at the rear seat 
So the rear seat, first thing you notice, of course, suicide doors. Once again, you have this beautiful carpeting throughout the interior here. And the coolest function that Matt noticed is, ready for this? Fold down picnic tables, push another button, fold out little TVs here. And they're all controlled via this touch panel here in the middle. So you have the same kind of sort of eye drive function that you had at the front. And then I can all make it just disappear by folding that panel down. Down here, temperature controls, the same soft, medium, high, and max functions. Of course, heated rear seats. What, what would you come to expect on something like this? And then center armrest. Oh my goodness. Uh, other things you'll notice is there's actually a rear partition between the, the main passenger compartment and the trunk area. Of course, these headrests have these nice, squishy little pillows on them. Uh, and then down here, look, you even have foot vents. And once again, everything is chrome. If it could be chrome and polished and brightened, it's gonna be chrome, polished, and brightened. Not only do we have the suicide doors, but integrated into them is the umbrella. To start up a Rolls-Royce Cullinan, there's a start button here on the left side. I don't know if you can see that, Matt. Yeah, put on the brake and start it up. And you're greeted by a symphony, of course, not just your standard door chime, because that would be very day class A, if you will. Uh, I do have the uh, spec sheet here. So, um, total suggested re retail price, uh, this is a lot of zeros, $420,630. Uh, some of the interesting options, Matt, those um, rear TVs, the rear theater configuration, $8,000. Indulge bespoke clock. So I believe that's that. It's a nice looking clock, right? But um, that is a $5,000 um, option. The uh, Spirit of Ecstasy Uplet is, uh, what's that, $4,500. You're probably laughing at me saying, I could hear the engine from the outside, but what about now? I don't hear, I don't feel, I'm not even sure if the engine's on. Did I, did I mess it up? Nope. It's definitely running, but you just simply can't tell. So to put it in gear, pull down on the stock, I can't begin to explain to you what an incredible experience this is. The hood is the longest piece of metal I've, I've seen in my entire life. I mean, you could play an entire game of soccer on that hood. Or football, if you're from America. That's just bizarre. So pulling out onto a real road in the car worth more than I'll ever make. Okay, any traffic? Nope, so come to a complete stop and let's see uh, let's see what it'll do. Wow, it takes off with absolute ease. I mean, uh, it used to be and, and quote me if you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Rolls Royce used to describe their their power figures as adequate. Well, 563 horsepower um, is, I think more than adequate, well more than adequate. I don't know how much this vehicle weighs, but I'm suspecting a lot. Funny enough, it does have even an off-road mode with hill descent control. Somewhat, it was someone's job to draw a Rolls-Royce Cullinan on the hill descent control button. Isn't that funny? Imagine, imagine that meeting. But the second thing you're struck with, besides the incredible amount of torque, is it, it rides like no other German car. I mean, it's, it's floaty. Like, why can't every car be like this? And I'm not talking about, you know, having de decanters in the back seat, but I'm talking about the ride quality because it just, this is what we need for American roads. You, you know, look, look, we're in South Carolina right now going down a four lane divided highway in a straight line. Why do I need precision handling and tight steering? This is how Americans drive back roads and freeways and the Cullinan is just built for it. I think every car should be a Cullinan. We need to get back to that kind of, that kind of attitude where why would I want a vehicle that performs on, on the Nuremberg ring when I'm driving around every day uh, to the coffee shop or in, in this case to Burlington, Bur Coat Burlington Coat Factory. If you're an Office fan, you'll, <laughs> you'll probably get that reference pretty quickly. Like I was a little bit on the fence when I heard uh, and I'm like, it's just going to drive like an X7 or an X5. It does not. 
it is not like an X5 or an X7 or any other German or British vehicle I've ever driven. It's not like a Range Rover. It's it's something really special. It's like an extremely well-made chunk of granite that's just suspended on a cushion of air. And that's basically what it is. As always, go back to tflcar.com for more news views and real world Rolls-Royce Cullinan reviews. I really want to take this off-road and I really want to tow with it. So maybe we can convince Rolls to let us do that.